50 of the income stream. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Pat Flynn here to help you make more money, save more time and help more people too. And today we're going to talk about email marketing, but we're going to do it in a fun way. The other day, yesterday, I filmed a YouTube video within the income stream itself. And I got to tell you, it definitely burned me out the, pre the preparation beforehand. So I'm going to take a little bit of a lighter day today. I'm going to do a formal email marketing video. Plus I'm doing a training a little bit on uh, later on today. But here's how we're gonna have some fun. Just hold on one sec. Welcome to the income stream. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Or oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave. With no fee required, the income stream with Pat Flynn. What's up, y'all? Welcome in. Thanks for being here on the income stream. I brought a good friend with me. His name is Spinner, and we're going to take Spinner on a spin today. This is how we're going to determine what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you a little bit about what's what's going on here. Um, but first of all, hey, day 50, I appreciate you so much. Can't believe we've been going for half a century now, uh, if you will. But, um, you know, yesterday, like I said, we did a formal YouTube video. I had like pop-ups like this show up. Hold on, I, I had pop-ups like that show up. We talked about content hacks. I had it all like spaced out, five, four, three, two, one. And uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. It went really well. That video in particular, if you're looking at the analytics, actually do ha uh, does have more views than the regular income stream videos that we do. But it did take a lot of work. And I said, you know what? I'm doing a training a little bit later today on email marketing. I just wanna put all my effort into that. Plus I stayed up late, late last night practicing and rehearsing that. So I wanted to have a little bit of a lighter day with you here and have some fun on the spinner. Um, so I'll share with you what is here in just a moment, but it makes some cool sounds. As you can see. And uh, if you wanna join me on the training later about email marketing, I will be talking about it today. Any sort of tips, these yellow these yellow ones here say tips. They're gonna be tips, actually I do see a little bit of a glare. Let me, let me. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, the tips will be about email marketing if we land on the yellow ones here, which are tips. Uh, but I am doing a formal training a little bit later today. If you actually go to patflin.com slash training, patflin.com slash training, I'm actually doing a webinar later today. We have nearly 5,000 people registered for that. How crazy is that? And I'm gonna be talking about some email marketing tips for beginners and advanced as all, uh, and also share a little bit about my program, uh, Email Marketing Magic as well. Uh, so come to that if you can, that's at noon Pacific. Again, one more time, that's at patflynn.com slash training. But hey, we're gonna have some fun and I look forward to seeing you there. By the way, the last time we had about 5,000 people signed up, the room was full at, at certain moments. So get in early if you can. If you can't get in, just keep trying to get in. As soon as people leave, it'll open up a spot for you. But 5,000 people. That's pretty incredible. Uh, Rap and Combat says, 50 days, bro. Loving the upgrades and nifty tweaks. I'm always trying to improve. I saw this exact thing on a live stream from a man named Joe. P.E. with Joe. Any P.E. with Joe fans or uh, do you know who P.E. with Joe is? He holds the world record for number of people watching live during a fitness training program virtually. And that number is over 900,000. Uh, anyway, my kids and I and my wife, my wife actually introduced us to him. Uh, we do PE with Joe, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a fun way to get the kids moving and, you know, he makes it fun on Fridays. He wears a costume and it's just like like little hit trainings, but for kids. And I'm working out with April. I work out outside of that as well. But it's to show up with the kids and get them active because we can't go outside. And uh, Joe's pretty awesome. And he had one of these things where he had the different uh, exercises on here for whatever reason, it was always the hard ones that were selected. So um, yeah, anyway, I got the idea and I was just like, Joe, that's amazing. I'm gonna buy one of these. It just arrived yesterday and uh, that's what we're gonna do. So here, here's the gist of everything. That, maybe if I pull up this one, it'll be a little bit easier to see. But yes, there we go. So red is question. I'm gonna answer any questions that you might have about anything, okay? Green is a YouTube channel review. This is this purple one is a giveaway. So what am I giving away? I'm giving away a signed copy of my book, Superfans, if we land on giveaway. There's uh, the yellow one is for a tip. Red is question again. This particular purple one, I'm gonna do a little dance for you. We'll pop on some music. 
but hey, this is just a demonstration. Blue is a website review. I'll review one of your websites. A question, YouTube channel, giveaway. Okay. Oh, and this this purple one is story time. So I'll tell you I'll tell you a little story. Does this sound like fun? Do you guys want to participate? Does this sound cool? All right. So just trying to always up my game here. You know, this is a this is a show. It's a show, the income stream show, right? Not just a regular old live stream. Watch it. Oh, magic. The income stream, thanks to Austin Saylor, by the way, S-A-Y-L-O-R, who uh, developed that for me, plus that awesome rad intro. I don't know if you've been here and saw that yesterday. It debuted yesterday, the intro with the sort of 80s Saved by the Bell inspired background, plus the little karaoke thing. Very, very me, right? 80s baby, watch Saved by the Bell every day, sing karaoke. Anyway, just trying to make this, just trying to make this more fun. So uh, let's do this. Oh, by the way, uh, 208 people, hit that like button. There's no like goal today. Today, your giveaway happens on this purple, this purple one. I know that's hard to see. I might get some uh, white marker for the purple, but, uh, or I can do like cards, post notes, maybe. I also want to change this thing. This thing is, this thing is magnetic. Spin it to win it. Anyway, should we, should we give it a shot? Let's do a, uh, should I put music on while it spins? It doesn't spin for that long. Plus it makes a cool sound. Anyway, let's just do it. That's an animated gift for you. A question. Okay, so if you have a question, let me know in the chat and I will not move on until we have an answer for you. So, uh, anyway, uh, while the questions are coming in, just let me keep talking. How much did this cost? I think it was like 30 bucks. Um, and there, this is the 18 inch version. There's a 12 inch version. There's a 24 inch version. I honestly didn't measure. And luck, I have this like on a stool, on a box, on another box, and um, can't wait till this show is on Cheddar. Dude, that would be a huge goal. If we could get this sort of, you know, propagated out there for people, that would be, that would be really amazing. Okay, here's a question from Chad. Hey, Chad, where are you going? No, that's, that's cool. K-Walk. There we go, Chad. Uh, thank you all for being here, by the way. Danny, Francis, K Walk, McCoy, Mark, Aaron, dogs are the best friends. You're amazing. So here's a question from Chad. I'm an affiliate. Uh, if I'm an affiliate, is there a way to track if someone came from my social profile or YouTube channel to purchase a product from my affiliate website without clicking on my affiliate link? In some cases, the answer is yes. In some cases, the answer is no. You can create special links that you can then pop into certain places such that in the reporting tool for that uh, for that particular item, excuse me, you'll be able to track where it comes from. You can even do this on Amazon Associates and many other programs where there's higher level reporting involved, meaning you'd get a unique link for the same product that you'd put maybe one on your resource page, one, um, one inside a book, one inside, and by the way, you can't put Amazon affiliate links in books or emails, by the way, but just in general, you can put them in different places, right? You can have a special link for your resource page, a special link for a podcast episode, a special link for another one, and then you'd be able to see yes. However, in many cases, affiliate programs do not have that capability, in which case you can only go so far in terms of tracking. Um, you might be able to reach out and ask because they can have some internal reporting as far as uh, where people are coming from, the origin. However, that's very rare. Um, especially for more simplified affiliate programs. So what you can do, however, is use a tool if you're on WordPress, for example, uh, there is a plugin called Pretty Link and Pretty Link allows you to create a nice looking link from an ugly looking link, right? So my affiliate link for ConvertKit, for example, is not convertkit.com slash Pat Flynn equals question mark and blah, 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 blah. It's smartpassiveincome.com slash ConvertKit and that's it. And so what I can do is I can have smartpassiveincome.com slash convertkit for when I mention it on the podcast, um, slash convertkit one for any links on the blog post, convertkit two for this and that, and I can just keep track and write notes actually within uh, pretty links to at least understand which ones are getting more clicks. I won't know specifically conversions and where people are coming from, but I can assume, hey, I'm getting a ton of traffic from here. That's likely accounting for a lot of that stuff. Can I put a pretty link in a book that goes to an Amazon link? Yes, you can do that. However, you need to be clear when you drop that link anywhere, uh, not on a book or not in uh, an email still, uh, you have to be very clear that the destination is ultimately Amazon. Click the link to go to Amazon to purchase. I got docked actually, in fact, for not having that mentioned on my book club page. It just says buy book and then it took them to Amazon 
You're not allowed to do that. They have to know that they're going to Amazon. Here we go. Next spin. Ooh, a YouTube channel review. There's only two of those on the board. So, hey, hook me up with a YouTube channel. And by the way, this is great because there was somebody who left a super chat yesterday. Super chats are paid comments that come in and uh, all that gets donoed, donated to other places. Last month, we donated over 6,000 meals to the San Diego Food Bank. Just congratulations, everybody. I was so Bro. proud of you for that. Any super chats that come in today are going to be, uh, and this month are going to Project Cure, which is an organization that helps those in the medical field right now. There are also other super chats that came in, uh, rap and combat, thank you so much for that, 50 days. Martin came in with one earlier, I appreciate you for that, where did that go? Uh, hey Archer in the house, yes, upgrades and new intro. Dude, always trying to step it up, always trying to step it up. Up. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm I'm going to review this channel here because yesterday they left like a twenty dollar super chat or something crazy like that. So I wanted to go to YouTube. So we're here on YouTube. Uh, Chris D'Elia. I've been watching a lot of Chris D'Elia, by the way. Uh, and this is it here. B N S Goku. Goku. Great. All right. So we're gonna do a three to four minute channel review. B N S Goku. Great. Seven thousand. Subs, which is awesome. These foods are harmful because of how I post the content. Sorry, that I, that wasn't meant to poke fun. I just like channels like this where it's just text only, right? Are all are all of them like that, or do you? We can never change our past by thinking about it. It is impossible. These are really cool, well-produced videos um, that, sorry. sorry about that. Uh, these are really well-produced videos. Um, the thumbnails are great. I'm not quite sure what the theme is here, however. I think that's an important thing that you need to focus on. BNS Goku Great is a cool name, but what does that mean? Does BNS, does BNS mean something? Uh, I know what Goku is, but uh, that's from Dragon Ball Z. But... I need some more context. If I'm just landing on this page, maybe I discover one of your videos because it has to do with superfoods and I find it via search or somebody recommends it or it's linked to on Reddit or something. I come here on the channel, I have no idea what else I'm getting into. There, It's hard to decipher sort of what the theme is here. There's a lot of diet stuff. Fitch Nat Han, I don't know who that is. Master Wong, okay, I know some of these people. There's some food related things, why milk is bad for you, uh, top, Five tips for EMF protection. That one's getting 10K views only in the last four months. I would follow up and do another video about that uh, or some sort of sort of um, different angle related to that topic. And then you can link and cross promote each other and uh, end cards, cards, uh, end screens. Um, pay attention to, this, to the signals YouTube is giving you. But yeah, the artwork, I think that you have a really, really good opportunity to, you, you, you're doing yourself a disservice by not explaining a little bit about the sort of thematics of, of what your uh, website can, or excuse me, your YouTube channel can offer. Also, I think your logo could be a little bit bigger uh, too. There's a lot of real estate around your logo. Um, I can't tell what's inside the B. It looks like there's something there, but I think we can make that a little bit bigger. I think you can go into Google uh, for your settings here on YouTube and you can zoom in on that. You can crop and I would make that a little bit bigger. Let's see. Let's go into this this top 10 or top five tips. Yeah, top five tips for EMS protection or EMS. Hopefully this music is royalty free. I would imagine that it is. Uh, I wanna go into the comments. Great tips, I researched that online. Just checking to see, yep, you're very active. You're harding, you are uh, replying back. That's great to build a community. That's fantastic. Uh, let's see, video SEO score. I'm using uh, SEO tools from vidIQ here to dis determine what things are like. Um, your engagement rate is decent. Overall, about a 58% out of 100. There's a lot of things that you can do probably related to tags. Uh, let's see, video tags. I think you have room to add more tags. Let's see, it should give me a score of, uh, of other things that you can do. Um, one end screen, which is good. Description word count. Mm, it looks like your description could be a little bit bigger. Yes, there we go. Thank you, vidIQ. Your description could be a little bit better in terms of in this video, you will get to know top five EMF protection tips. Okay, that's not a bad way to start because you're using the same keywords. However, however, explain more. Add some keywords in there. I would definitely even go further about what your channel's about. I mean, you can go crazy, right? Let me go to Peter McKinnon's 
and I know this is a completely different space, but Peter McKinnon, good friend and a supporter of the Switch Pod, and I appreciate him and his art so much. So let's go to um, the description. Instagram versus reality. These really beautiful videos. He's a photographer, cinematographer. But here we go. Look at his description. A bunch of links, right? And he could even use a better. He can. Do, he can do a better job of uh, actually writing a description. Let's go to one of my videos, right? Pat Flynn, YouTube. I don't know why I went through Google to, to go there. Thank you for the super chat, by the way, Fly Ride. So if we go to, let's see, um, let's try this video here. But also, I live stream for 30 days in a row. Here's what happened. So a little bit of a description, more information, links mentioned in the video, scrolling down, then some information about my website and who I am and what these are about, and follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. So I think that that's where your best opportunity is for sure. Uh, so that's, that's that. We're going to spin the wheel in just a moment. I saw a super chat come in. I want to give a shout out and thank you to you. That was for fly ride, right? Where did that go? Where did that go? And if all y'all are watching this and you want to give some advice to, uh, Goku as well, I'm just going to call him Goku because that's what's memorable for me. Uh, anyway, Pat, you fired me back up for my live streams. It gave me such a dope framework to follow for my daily show. Now I have clarity. I was missing. Hey, congratulations. Let's spin the wheel. We're doing a giveaway. We're doing a giveaway. Okay, so here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna go into the comments. I'm gonna scroll up and down and wherever we end up, where my cursor is, that's who's gonna win. And if you win, send an email to pat at patflynn.com. My assistant will already know the name that's coming through. So it's not like you can just send an email and get free stuff. So uh, here we go. And what am I giving away? I'm giving away a free copy of my book, Super Fans, and it's gonna be signed by me. So here are all of you right now. I'm going to scroll up and down and wherever my cursor ends up, do you see my cursor there? I'm just gonna keep it in one place and wherever it ends up, that's who wins super fans. Here we go, three, two, one. Dole Whip Dad, boom, propagated, great word. Hey, congratulations, Dole Whip Dad. Send an email to pat at patflynn.com. We'll get you hooked up with a signed copy of super fans and I don't know why I'm using my arms like this. I think it's because I'm a little nervous about today's webinar, which if you don't know, it's happening right here. patflynn.com slash training. If you're watching this in the future, you can still go through that link for the next upcoming training or a replay of that training. Uh, so anyway, dough up dad, congratulations. I need the air horn. I need the air horn sound. We still have Chewbacca from yesterday. <laughs> Happy May 4th, by the way. May the 4th be with you. There was only one. Like, this is a one in 16 chance. One in 14 chance. I don't know math right now, but... Uh, hey, thank you, Chris, for the super chat. I appreciate you. So, yeah, we have... Uh, this board is amazing. I'm not going to drop it in every single time. Although, maybe I might, because I'm, I'm just having a blast. This is so fun. Okay, let's do another one. Congratulations, Dole Whip Dad. Hey, you got this. Donated 10 bucks. Thank you for donating uh, your super chats. I sent a request for an interview on my podcast for nonprofits, topic building audience. I will look forward to talking soon. Pat at patflynn.com. That's where you can reach me. Here we go. Question. All right. There are questions. Let's, do, let's answer some questions. Here we go. What are your best recommendations for a free email account? So this is a great question and we're talking about email today. So a uh, recommendation that I have is ConvertKit. If you go to smartpassiveincome.com slash ConvertKit, you will actually be taken to a place where you can get a free account with ConvertKit and you'll have a certain number of subscribers there for free, 500 uh, free now, which is cool. They're, they keep upping that. And it's a great tool to get introduced to that gives you access to not just the ability to send broadcasts and such, but you'll also get access to landing pages and, and other cool things that you can use to build your email list too. So uh, that's what I recommend, smartpassiveincome.com slash convertkit. If you happen to upgrade at some point to a paid program uh, or paid subscription with ConvertKit, just know, full disclosure, I'm an affiliate. That is an affiliate link, smartpassiveincome.com slash convertkit. And uh, there we go. Let's answer another question because sometimes they are hard to find. Uh, how often do you email your different email segments? This is uh, an interesting question because it really depends on which 
segment I'm emailing to, right? If it's just my general nurture segment and they haven't yet defined wh what their interests are, because that's kind of what happens in how I teach email marketing. It's a little bit more advanced, but hey, I give you the steps to get there. Remember the training today, patflin.com slash training at noon. But if it's just my general nurture audience, it's essentially once a week via a broadcast with some tips and other things like that involved. Um, and also links to the previous content that came out during the week. It's sort of like a digest. However, if at any moment in time a person goes, oh, I wanna click on that thing about podcasting, now they get taken off that nurture sequence and put into a podcasting sequence where I know because of that action that they're more interested in that topic. And we're gonna send them a little bit more uh, frequently. For example, two to three times a week, offering a lot of value, sharing that we know what they're going through or what they're thinking about, what their objections might be, just really starting to build that relationship. And then it'll either continue to serve them and eventually drop them potentially into a live training of, uh, or an on-demand training that I have. Um, in addition to that, um, and in addition to that, uh, it, it, we, we just might have a promotion for them to get into. Now, it doesn't happen right away, right? If somebody just came in and we haven't really had a lot of conversations together, why would I ask them to marry me right now, right? You wanna have a couple dates first, show there's value, show there's a good relationship, and then you get down on one knee and ask, would you like to buy my product? I'd love to help you for the rest of my life. Um, I love you. I love you. Uh, do, do you ever do you ever see that meme where it's like somebody? I don't know. It, it's a high pitched voice that calls somebody who like broke up with them, and they're like, um, "I'm so sorry. I miss you, and I love you." And that's what it sounds like. And then what people do is they put that audio on top of like when it goes. It's like a it's like a whale. So it sounds like a whale or like cars driving like in a drag race. <sighs> and it's just like, man, it cracks me up. That always gets me. The other one that always gets me is a meme where there's a garbage truck pulling up a bin and it's pulling it up really slowly. And, and, and then it, it drops it back. And then on its way out, whoosh, all the trash just like sprays everywhere. It's just so sad. Oh my gosh. I For whatever reason, those ones just crack me up. Uh, thank you so much for the, the super chat, BNS, Goku, great. Hope that was helpful. That was light, but very, very advisable for you to do. Um, I think I think if you can tile those things together, that's how you'll get more subscribers. And for you to get 7K without doing that, like, man, let's ramp it up because this is for the future, right? Um, I have read 260 books in one and a half years and I'm sharing the lessons through that channel. I would have never known that. Honestly, I would have never known. I read books so you don't have to watch these videos to get everything you need to know about them, right? I love that. Okay, let's let's spin again. Hey, 270, we're almost at 300. If you wanna invite your friends in, give them a chance to win, give them a chance to learn, uh, feel free to do that. The link for that is patflynn.com slash the income stream. I'm getting better, thank you for, I had a couple people reach out and say, Pat, you keep going this way, but it should be this way. patflynn.com slash the income stream. That's where you wanna come every single morning and that's where you can have some fun. And uh, I've been going live 50 days in a row and we're having a good time. And I'm here to keep it real for you, here to, 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 to take it, you, your mind away from all the craziness. And uh, hey, we're gonna get to 100. Like we're gonna get to 100, maybe even 1,000. I don't know, but I'm gonna keep improving, improving, right? We're all on a level, play, level playing field now. Hey, Jimmy Fallon, I'm coming for you, man. man. Ellen, hey, you're webcamming from your own home. How's your setup? Do you have a wheel? Let's play heads up one day. I love you, Ellen. Okay, here we go. Story time, story time. Okay, so when I started my business back in 2008, had no idea what an email list was. Started my business helping people pass an architectural exam, was even selling study guides, not yet having an email list. And then eventually a lot of people asked me, Pat, how did you build that business? It actually saved my life, really. I got laid off in 2008, built a business helping people in the architecture space with an exam, and that turned into a really great business. Um, so a lot of people asked me, Pat, how did you do that? Can you teach me how to do the same thing? And I was like, well, I'm not an expert, but I'm just gonna share everything at my blog, smartpassiveincome.com. So that's what I did. That was at the end of 2008, when that website, where most people know me from now, my podcast and the YouTube channel and whatnot, uh, that's where they know me from. Well. I still had yet to build my email list there and on the other spot. I didn't believe in email marketing at first. I was like, well, I don't know if I wanna pay for that because I can just connect with people through a blog. I can connect with people on my podcast. I wasn't quite sure um, how important that was. And it wasn't until early 2010 that I finally created a lead magnet or some sort of incentive to have people subscribe. And 
after a couple months, I already had a few hundred people on my email list. And I just was like, so kicking myself because immediately I started to see the value in it only after I had started, right? And the value was number one, the direct connection and communication with the audience, right? It's so different than any other medium right now, even social media, um, it's still something that we also have control over. Social media, obviously, at this point in time is getting in the way in terms of algorithms. Even people who've said, I like your page, or I like this group, or I like your Instagram, uh, or I like your YouTube channel, they're not seeing everything you post, and that's quite sad. With emails, if deliverability is good, uh, your emails will get through, and now you're just fighting against other people in those, in those subject lines um, for attention. But I gotta tell you, if I could take one thing back and do it again, I would start my email list much sooner. And like, I didn't even have an email list by the time I had products to sell on greenexamacademy.com, that website. And it was such, it's such a shame. This is why I highly recommend getting started with an email list. And if you need help, I would recommend going to this page here, smartpassiveincome.com slash toolkit, because if you go to that page, uh, this will take you to this website here. If you scroll down, these are all resources to help you during this time. By the way, there's a fourth podcast episode that just came out about podcasting, the state of podcasting during this crisis. If you are a podcaster, I'd definitely recommend listening to that. Here's where I would recommend you get started. The zero to 100 email challenge. This is what will literally help you from scratch get 100 emails in about three days. And this is free, uh, as well as these other courses, which we've given away over $3 million of stuff during this time. But smartpassiveincome.com slash toolkit is where you wanna go to get access to that for free. And that was story time with Pizzat Flynn. Here we go. A tip, email marketing tip. One of the best tips is to realize that email is not a one to many communication platform. Although it is, right? You write a broadcast email or you set up your autoresponder emails ahead of time. What it can be, what it should be is a two way communication street. Meaning, you should be asking your audience questions via email. Like, what are you struggling with right now? What's your number one challenge related to blank? What's your, um, what's something you wish was on my blog or on my podcast or my YouTube channel that you haven't yet seen yet? I wanna deliver that for you. And now, number one, that'll get your email whitelisted in those email clients, right? Because uh, if a person replies, that basically signifies that, hey, this is a real person and let's make sure all the further emails in the future come through. Number two, it'll show that you actually care enough to reply to somebody and to have a conversation with somebody on the other end. And if you're just starting out and you're small and you often say to yourself, oh, how can I compete with the big boys, right? How, how do I do that? Well, here's how you do it. You have direct communication with those people because they're not gonna get the same attention that you can give them, especially early on. There are advantages to small and also the riches are in the niches. So starting small is totally, totally cool. That's your advantage over the bigger players. And then tip number three, and finally, the reason why you wanna communicate is because literally your audience will tell you what they need help with. You don't have to guess anymore. Imagine in your autoresponder, you put an email that says, what are you struggling with right now? It's like the fourth email that goes out a month after they subscribe. And then now a month after people subscribe, whether they subscribe today or next week or a month from now, a month after that, you're always gonna get these replies from people who know what you're about, who go, hey, I'd love for you to talk about this. I'm struggling with this. I need help with this. How do you think I knew what books to write about? How do you think I knew I know what podcast episodes to create? I don't guess, my audience tells me. And again, if you're just starting out, your advantage is you, you have a smaller audience. That's your advantage. You can communicate and thus deliver better value to those small groups of people. There's a glitch there. It's small groups, of, small groups of people and thus attract other people like them too. Cool? Bruh. We get it? Hook me up with an emoji in the chat if you like this format and if you think it's fun and if that tip was helpful, let me know. Hope you're all well. We've got Rob in the house, Sukman, Andrew, Just Samson, Ellen, Zenya Vlada, uh, BNS Goku, Andrew, uh, Kishvir, Louis, Louis B, KWAL Comedy, Liz, Jonathan. I'm sure Janelle's in here. I'm sure Grandma Goody's in here. I'm sure Rap and Combat's in here. Like, awesome. This is so much fun. I want to give away another book. That is, oh, we're one away from the giveaway. <gasps> oh, too bad. <laughs> Awesome, thanks for the emojis. Here we go. Another tip, another email tip. All the stuff today is about email. So here's another email tip for you. Put an opt-in form on your about page. Your about page is a very warm place on your blog. 
because, or on your website. And it's because people go, oh, what's this about? I wanna know who's behind this, right? And that's a great place to not make it just about yourself. In fact, I have a YouTube video that is, I wonder if it's actually still ranking. Let me go to the computer. What a, what a screen grab there. There's a Porgy Potter, how to make an about page. There we go, third one down. How to write the perfect about page. Uh, a very underrated video, by the way. Hey, if you're creating any content online, doesn't matter if it's on a blog or a podcast or a video channel, or maybe even on social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, you need to focus on having a great about or buy. So anyway, I don't know who that non-bearded youngin is, but uh, this bearded person is gonna say, follow that young kid's advice because that is actually one of my favorite YouTube videos in terms of just pure value. It'll teach you how to structure your about page. A lot of times we think of the about page as just, here's what's about me. That's not what it should be about. In fact, it's more about how you can serve through your own experiences and your, who you are and your character and whatnot, how you can serve the person who's there on the other end. And if a person comes to your about page, you need to have a subscription box. Um, if anything, at least more than one. Um, if I go to, and this is who taught me how to do this, socialtriggers.com. This is a website by my good friend, Derek Halpern, the loud and proud good friend of mine. If you go to his about page, check this out. Email opt-in form number one. Click here to subscribe, email opt-in form number two. He has a couple on there. He reached out to me. This is in fact how Derek got on my radar. He reached out to me out of nowhere. I had no idea who he was. So this is an example of reaching out and providing value to people. He reached out to me. He said, Pat, I'd love to help you uh, increase your email subscribers. I'm not selling you anything. I just wanna help out. I love your stuff. If you wanna hear what I think you can do to improve, let me know. If not, no worries. And I love how he wasn't like, click here or let me sell you this thing. He was just like, hey, I wanna offer you value. Are you interested? And I said, yeah. Sure, this is also story time, by the way. Uh, and he was like, here are like five things you can do right now that uh, literally tomorrow you're gonna see more emails. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah. So I put an opt-in form on my about page. I did a few other things. And literally the next day I 2X my, my email subscription growth. And I reached back out to Derek and I was like, dude, thank you so much for that. And the about page was the one that performed the best. Anyway, that's how I got to become good friends with Derek. And you might consider, Pat, how, how in the world would uh, a, a nobody sort of reach out to a somebody? And Derek wasn't a nobody, he was very smart and he had an audience already too. But even if you are a nobody, if you have value to share that can help me or you can help the person that you're trying to help, that's how you can build a relationship, right? There was a person who I interviewed who was like, Pat, let me give you an example of how you could reach out to somebody. If, and this was at the time when I was launching the SwitchPod, SwitchPod uh, product that my videographer and I created turns into a tripod really quickly. He was like, Pat, if somebody random came up to you and said, Pat, um, I know a friend who knows Casey Neistat. Can I send an email intro? I don't know if it's gonna work out, but would that be helpful to you? I don't care who you are. If that's the most important thing to me right now, which it was at the time, you're my best friend right now. You can always provide value for sure. Super chat came in. A couple super chats came in, by the way. Uh, thank you so much for that. Who that? Uh, BNS Goku, awesome. Um, it was awesome. Also, I've lost 57 pounds in five months without exercise. Whoa, you could see abs? That's that's awesome. Congratulations on losing the weight. Uh, huge deal, absolutely huge deal. Corey says, that was worth a lot more than $5. We'll do better in the future. Hey, no, you no fee required, like, right? Like the song says, no fee required, but I will happily accept the super chats that come in. They will get forwarded to those in the medical field who need it right now. Here we go. Question, I got answers. Here do we go. What was the name of his website? Halpin, Derek Halpern, Social Triggers. There's your question. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna go, we're gonna go a little bit more here. I need some questions to answer. I'm looking and I can't find them because there's so many things. Spin, spin, spin. Asking a question in an email is a great tip, yes. Faux show. Um, burr, burr, burr. Okay, okay. If I don't see a question, I'm gonna spin. <laughs> Kaya says, I keep cracking up at Pat's shirt. I have boxes of each in the garage. Some I am working to cover or to convert to digital. I need a USB floppy disk reader. Just curious, what is on all those floppies? Yeah, here's a shirt. Never forget y'all, 80s baby. That's what I'm talking about. 
Question, any tip to send an email to companies? Yes, in fact, a great way to go about contacting a company is to not email them. <laughs> Find other means. Number one, if you have somebody who you know who already has an in on that company, start there. It's always easier to get a recommendation or referral to somebody versus just reaching out cold. And cold via email is tough because everything comes across as selly sort of by default, right? Even if you have value to share. So that's number one. Number two, try social media channels. Social media often, those are people who are like hawks or vultures on those channels all day and they're looking for stuff. And they're often a lot better at forwarding to people in the company who you might need to reach out to. Um, and then number three, see how you might be able to feature that company first. It's always, always going to get a much better reaction or response, especially on social, if you've had, number one, a conversation with somebody on the socials uh, beforehand, but number two, if there was something that you could do to show value to that company. For example, if I was reaching out to a brand new software company, I might go to their webpage and go, hey, this website looks amazing and I'm really interested in this product. Anyone else have experience with at company's name? And that'll get me to start a conversation. And now when I even, even if I reach out via email, I might like drop in that screenshot and show that there's a lot of conversation about it. It becomes a starting point for a conversation. So that is a great tip because it's not, if, if you do what everybody else does, it's going to be received like everybody else. And that's going to be sort of just noise. And we don't want to create just noise, right? Question says, how often to send emails to lists with people getting so, so many emails these days? Number one, it depends. And in fact, I know a lot of people who send multiple emails a day and guess what? They have like a 70% open rate. How does that happen? How does, that, how does somebody send 70 emails, not 70, how does somebody get a 70% open rate on their emails and they're sending multiple a day and they're not annoying people? How does that happen? It's because of expectations. If you can set the expectation that every email is important or relates to something that a person can subscribe to and look forward to getting, well, then it's gonna be a win for everybody, right? And so I think the question of how many emails isn't necessarily, Francis, the right question to ask. It's what kinds of emails should I be sending that could help a person on the other end feel good or feel like they're getting value? And on top of that, um, how can I set that expectation up front before a person subscribes? Karma Cashflow, thank you so much. Pat, where do you get all your t-shirts? I need to know T Public dot com is where I like to go. There are a couple options. There's like a regular shirt and there's like the soft, like don't don't turn this into animated GIF, by the way. Um, the, this, this soft like t-shirt is so comfortable. It literally is so comfortable. And I just received a new batch. So look forward to tomorrow because I'll be having some more shirts on there. If we get one more person on the stream, we're gonna have 300 people watching simultaneously. I think the wheel is attractive to people, which means we gotta go back to it. Here we go. Another question, okay. Let's see, do you, um, do you think email should have videos, like a short greet and quick tip? The trend that I've been seeing lately is a GIF file to a video. If you're gonna pop in a video, I wouldn't actually inject the video in there. You don't want it to have, uh, have it be an attachment, of course, because it's like, oh, that's a virus. But what you could do, and I've seen this often, um, is you can use a tool like Bonjoro, or bomb bomb, and there's many others. Um, but what it does is you can include a little preview of the video, which is like an animated GIF that would capture a person's attention, and they can click on that link to open up a hosted uh, video somewhere else. So um, videos are great. I think in terms when it, in terms of reaching out to other players in your field, that would be a great thing to do. I think including too many videos is tough because you have to realize that people go to email to read; they don't go to email to watch. So you got to make it very incentivized to go and click and watch a video. And if you come into the webinar today, if you go to um, not ten minutes, if you go to this one, patflynn.com slash training, I'm going to actually share with you a email campaign that I use during my launches that actually includes a video at one moment in time during that campaign, which works very well, but it's all about positioning, right? And I'll share with you how to do that more. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big sequence of events that happens to lead up to that and to lead to the close of a sale. But uh, that's a little bit more advanced. But uh, videos are great, but uh, you gotta also remember, you gotta keep them short and sweet. And um, a lot of times people uh, do get excited about a video and feel bad not watching them. But at the same time, you gotta be aware of a person's time and the fact that they're reading emails, not watching videos, right? Oh, 315, how do we do that? 
I almost choked my coffee. Wow. Hey, if you're brand new here, welcome here. If you have brand new hair, no, if you are brand new here, my name's Pat Flynn. I help people make more money, save more time, and help more people too by creating businesses, small and big, online. I did that and have been doing that since 2008. Multiple businesses, many of them sold now, creating new businesses as we go from digital to physical products. And this is the community. Welcome to the community, everybody. This is the Corin team, and this is the Income Stream. Join me every morning, patflynn.com slash the Income Stream is where you wanna go, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, every day. Here we go. Oh, it was the almost dance. It was almost that dance, but we're doing a website review. So pop in a website in your uh, chat. And if you can do it in a way where you're not just typing in the website because YouTube's not gonna see it, you can write out the word dot or you know dub, 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 dot. So however you can uh, best get that website review to me uh, or that website to me, let me know. I wear a medium sized shirt, Karma, and please don't buy shirts for me. No, 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 like don't, no, I'm, no. I should have known, I should have known you were doing that. I should have known you were doing that. Don't do that. There's only one reason why you would ask what sh shirt size my uh, I am. So you can gauge what my bench press is like. Okay. Uh, we want the dance. Uh, what what did we land on? Oh, website review. Yeah. Ba -ba -bam -ba -bam. Monkey bar gym. Chad, got you. I got you. Monkeybargym.com. Let's do this. Oh, wait. Site can't be reached monkeybargym.com. Let's maybe try monkeybargym.com. Okay, so number one, get that redirect fixed so that if a person just literally types it in without the www, uh, that it will go here. So that's a redirect on your domain or server side. So just definitely check that out. Okay. Train at home, monthly membership, specific programs, educational videos. I want a little bit more information about training and your philosophy on that. This is a very generic thing to say, and I'm just being upfront with you. I understand what this website's about though. That's a good thing. I think we can go a little bit further because you're competing with all the other people in the nutritional and physical fitness space, right? So train at home, monkey bar gymnasium. Is this all about monkey bars? Probably not, right? Look at that little thing. Wow, that looks amazing. I want that. Um, anyway. So what kind of training at home? What's your philosophy? What's your take? What What is your unique identifier, unique selling proposition? Pop that in here, right? Monthly membership, specific programs, educational videos. That's still generic. It almost makes me seem like I have to pay to play to see anything because it's like monthly memberships. Okay, well, I don't even know what this is about. Why are you introducing me the solution when I don't even know necessarily the kinds of problems that you solve at this point? So that's number one. Number two, let me go to the about page. We just talked about the about page. A great photo there. I love that. This is actually... Um, a very welcoming photo. A lot of times on about pages, it lacks a lot of personality. You need to bring your personality onto your about page. So well done there. We've helped hundreds of people. Who have helped? What are your names? I wanna know who's behind this. Um, avoid unnecessary pain, unnecessary surgeries, and being stuck on lifelong prescriptions, including ourselves. We wanna share with you what works and what doesn't and why. We want to share our learning experiences with you. I would grade that about an 80%. Um, and that's that's high. That's actually really high when it comes to copy to help people understand what you have to offer. Great that you're sharing that you, you've had these experiences too. It makes me feel like you're a part of this process with me, that you're just a couple steps ahead of where I am and I wanna work with you, right? Number two, we can add a lot more. Oh, here we go. Sorry, scroll down. These are great. These are beautiful images. Join the community. So about John. Jessica, okay, this is written in third person and that's totally okay to do, but just realize that it's going to be a little bit harder to connect. If there is sort of a line of accessibility, then that's okay to do. Meaning, hey, if you wanna get in contact with us, you know, join the community and then we'll talk to you in first person essentially. But what I was getting at here is here in the copy, which is great. I like the white on the sort of uh, ba uh, the darker background. The most important, and by the way, you can collect emails here as well, like we talked about, but I, I, I'm i gonna click on join our community in just a moment, because that seems to be the number one thing you want people to do, which is great, very clear. I wanna go to that to see how that works out. You need to wor use words like you on this page, me, like the viewer, right? You're just talking about yourselves here. And yes, it's an about page, but the about page is not about you. It's about what you can do here, right? So we've helped hundreds of people like you avoid unnecessary pain so that you don't have to stay on lifelong subscriptions 
and we've gone through these experiences ourselves. We're here to help you X, Y, Z, right? Scroll down below to learn more about us and how we can help you live a life of pain-free, uh, a pain-free life, essentially, right? So really getting really getting into the, to, to speaking to the person on the other end. Right now, it's very, hey, look at me versus, hey, look at how we can help you. Right. Look who look at all the people that we've helped before. No, no, no. It's hey, this is this. These are the kinds of things that we've done for others so that we can help you, too. If that makes sense. Join our community. I want to click on that little video. Hey, everybody. John Hines here from the Monkey Bar Gym. And what we want to talk about today is helping you to change your life. Awesome. I love how you have a video here. That's great. Um, all I see is a video, though. I don't have a link to click on anything. I want to join the community, but I don't know if in this video you tell me to go somewhere or what. I think that if this is your primary call to action, I think I saw it here on the Start Here page too, right? On the home page. Actually, I don't see it there. Yeah, I'm kind of confused on like what the number one thing you want a person is to do. On the About page, it seemed like it was to join the community. Uh, on the home page, it seemed like some other things. So we have a little bit of work to do, but... Very, very good. Way better than a lot of the websites that we've re, uh, we've reviewed here in the past. I'm just getting a little picky with you because I'm impressed with, I, with what I'm seeing. I think you have all the tools. You have the personality. Like that's something I always look for. Who is on the other end of this? And I, I even even without diving in, um, already feel like I know you a little bit, which is which is huge. And those photos are great. Um, getting started. This is the last thing I want to talk about. Yeah. So that that goes back to here. So join the community and get started. Go to the same place. We want to sell this. And even though you may not be selling people on like a thing that they need to buy, you still need to sell. You need to sell the call to action, right? If it's to join the community, I want to see conversations that the community is having. I want to see the kinds of results the community is getting. I want to feel like I'm missing out, right? I want to feel like I'm missing out on something. FOMO, right? FOMO in a good way. FOMO is, a, is, 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 is powerful. Um, but with great power comes great responsibility, right? So you don't want to be FOMOing like the person who who bought all that hand sanitizer and is selling it at an uptick price. That's not cool. Screw you. But you do want to play on the idea that, hey, you're missing out if you're not coming in here. How can I, what if I can't watch the video? What if What if I'm at work and I'm on a call and I come across this? I'm not, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be, um, you know, driven to click through. FOMO. All right, another question. Let's go. Question, here we go. From Aberrant Art. If you're interested in a market that is flooded and full of clickbait, spam, nonsense, and overly saturated, for example, personal training, would you just suggest pursuing something else? No. If I asked myself that same question and I believe that because there was so much spam and clickbait and, and, and messiness and snake oil salesmen out there in the entrepreneurial space, I wouldn't be here today, right? It was actually, in fact, a great opportunity. It allowed me to much easier stand out and take the high road, take the authentic position in the space. I think it pre presents a really great opportunity. It becomes a them versus us situation. And if you're building a community, here's a tip, a tip for you, by the way, a free tip. If you're building a community, a great way to build a community is to create a them versus us situation or us versus them situation. So if you are in the nutritional space, maybe creating a common enemy, which is the companies that put just, you know, like these nasty preservatives and like man-made sugars in things just to make them tastier and more addictive. Well, hey, that's our common enemy here. Let's band together and, and fight that together because that will help with uh, the obesity rates in the United States and around the world, right? Now there's a mission, but a common enemy. Um, a common enemy in uh, internet marketing are the sort of snake oil salesmen, the the internet marketers. And, and this is why even though people, I'm not going to mention names, but big names in the internet marketing space who see that I have this big audience and I have earned a lot of trust with you, they come, they've come to me and they've gone, Pat, we want to offer you this amazing commission for this program that we're coming out with. Uh, we want to have a chat with you. We want to share you on our podcast. We want to have you on our videos. And you know what I say? Thanks, but no thanks. I'm very respectful. I usually just kind of brush it off and say, you know, I'm busy. I have these other things going on. And, you know, I feel a little bad because they're down to earth, real people. I just don't agree with their tactics and the way that they're doing things. And I don't necessarily position it as us versus them, but I think it's just inherently known 
that me being the family guy, the honest guy, the, the guy who's sharing the wins and failures, the, stu- the guy who gives away so much stuff that could be sold for free, that's what's in turn as a byproduct bringing customers in and bringing the sharing and having 300 plus people show up on a live stream like this today, which is super cool. So um, to, 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 to your question again, uh, no, it doesn't mean you, you walk away. It means that you can look for a position in there that people can look forward to because nobody goes, oh yeah, I like that. I like receiving that kind of clickbait. I, I, I like when somebody pitches me something that I don't need because it feels good. Nobody says that, right? And that's an opportunity for you to come in and create something real that people can connect with and uh, take a different stance on it. Who would be the common enemy in SEO? I think the common enemy in SEO would be people who might be coming up with black hack tactics. It might be, common enemy could be Google if you wanted to take that stance on it. Uh, the common enemy could be, uh, I mean, <laughs> this is how, we talked about Derek earlier, right? Derek wrote an article one day that said, content is not king. Fight me, essentially. And his stance was, design is often the queen, right? Design and content have to go together. And everybody who uh, says content is king uh, got really upset, but he did this purposefully because he knew that if he took that stance, it would attract a crowd. So the content creators came over and were like, Derek, you're wrong. And then all, all the designers started coming over to defend Derek. And Derek really had no preference. He just wanted to create a little bit of a, of, a, of a nice argument. And it was great because all those comments uh, turned into some really good conversation. And, you know, it's that, that they say the content is king, but design is queen, and we know who rules the house, right? So that, that, that was kind of his stance. And it was just a really interesting thing. When you have a stance on something that people can get behind, you're going you're gonna to attract this community, but you're also going to attract haters too. I just want you to know that. When you, when you take a stance on something, you're going to attract the people who are defending themselves on the other end. And you might get haters and trolls because of that. And I think that's you know, a really difficult thing to walk into. But at the same time, and we all hear this, right? Like, hey, you you got your first troll. You must be doing something right. There is some truth behind that because if you didn't have a troll, maybe you're not worth being trolled too. Hmm, interesting. All right, tip. Again, we're talking about email marketing today. Another email marketing tip would be to segment your audience. And this is a little bit more of an advanced tip, something I teach in my course, Email Marketing Magic. I will be sharing a lot of these advanced things today on my call at noon Pacific, patflow.com slash training. But um, segment your list. Meaning, let's say, for example, you're in the physical fitness space. And if you just send a general email to everybody, right? Like, let's say one day you are doing like a fitness regimen that uh, is for gaining weight right? Gaining muscle. Uh, this is how I gain muscle. Like, er. um, and you, you send an email about that journey with everybody. Well, wh- what are the people who are losing weight going to say? They're probably going to go, okay, this content is not relevant anymore. I'm out. I'm going to go find somebody else who can help me lose weight. Cause now Pat Flynn's talking about gaining weight, healthy weight, by the way. Or let's say I am about to do my first ultra marathon and I'm just excited about that. And then there's people in my audience who are following along in the training, but you know what? They're doing the couch to 5K run, right? Well, they're not gonna feel like it's relevant for them too. When you start to understand the different buckets of people in your email list, you get to understand that not all messages are meant for all people. And I made a huge mistake for the first four or five years of my email list. It was all one list hearing all the information. Here's another clear example. Let's say you're a photographer and you teach people photography. If you happen to get a coupon from Canon and you send it to your entire list, well, we all know that not everybody uses a Canon. What if you can just segment out the people who are Canon users? Or if you were doing ultra marathons, you can just segment out the people who are interested in following that particular journey. Or if you knew, if you were, um, you know, uh, a fitness person that you had a segment of people who followed you who were literally just runners and that's all they did. Now, when you have your weight training regimen, to gain weight, you can leave out those runners because those people shouldn't be hearing that. You can have better, more targeted communication when you segment your list. And this was something that I learned much later in the journey. And thanks to tools like ConvertKit, uh, it's been a lot easier to sort of segment and understand the different buckets of my audience. I also highly recommend a book called Ask 
by Ryan Levesque, which will teach you how to segment that audience and how to understand where those buckets exist so that you can then send people certain messages or leave people out of certain messages too. I missed a super chat, says Sukman. Thank you for that. Which one came in? Chad, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Did I miss another one? Let's see here. How are we all doing? Excited? We got four minutes left. So we're going to do one more spin and close it up for the day. I can't believe we're already done. Wow. The wheel was amazing, though. I liked the wheel. I like not knowing exactly what's going to happen. It all it also, like, keeps me on my toes, right? Like, yesterday, I knew exactly what I wanted to happen. I was like, hey, guys, we're going to talk about five content creation hacks. Tip number five is answer to questions. Tip number four, etc. cetera. And, um, yeah, that, that's Rafal. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Okay, here we go. Final spin of the day. I'm going to make it a big one. Ready? Three, two, one. A tip. Okay, final email marketing tip. Go to my training today. <laughs> Patflin.com slash training. That's going to happen at noon. Uh, by the way, it will be very full. We have over five, about 5,000 people registered. So if you try to get in um, and it's full, just keep trying. When people drop, it'll open up another spot. That's not the tip, although that is a tip. Um, I have more tips there, but it'll be a lot of fun. But uh, one more final tip for email. The most important thing is your subject line. The subject line of your email is everything. You can write the best email in the world. If it doesn't have a good subject line that's gonna capture people's attention, that moment of distraction is really important. When they see all those other emails in there, how are they going to pick yours over the others? You need to focus on that. Should you be clickbaity? There's a debate about that because you kind of have to be a little bit clickbaity. I don't, uh, it's, clickbaity is not the right term because clickbait means, hey, open this email, there's $1,000 inside. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. That's clickbaity. That's like, that's literally baiting. Um, but what I mean is you need to create something that's worth clicking on. Um, fulfill on that promise but you need it you need you, you you need you need to work on the yeah i glitched again you need to to work on your subject lines it is like sometimes i will write an email and i'll spend more time writing the subject line than the email itself right it's actually quite easy to write an email especially if you know what a person needs help with or where they're at or, or what the you know what sequence they're on or what what have you but that subject line i mean imagine a person receiving that email what's going to make them click on that email that's the whole purpose of a subject line. And then the whole purpose of the first paragraph or that first sentence is to get them to read the rest. And then if you get them through the first couple of sentences, then you've kind of got them at that point. So, so important. Click baby. Yes. Hey, we have time for another spin. All right, question. Question, a uh, tip from Aaron. I will put this again. Follow-up emails are, are also key. Great tactic that worked for me is worth doing it if no response after a few days. Got me from zero replies to everyone replying. Yep, the fortune is in the follow-up. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate you for that tip. Hey, first thumbs down of the day. I appreciate you. Uh, bad subject line equals delete. Yeah, all that hard work writing that email. Not cool. Let's see, how to create FOMO effect in subject line. That's a great question. That, that is a great question to understand the subject line sort of uh, analysis. Um, how to create FOMO. Uh, again, I, I teach this in my course. It's, it's, it's hard to answer in one minute, but you got to think about, well, what would make people not want to miss what's in that email, right? So a couple examples. You know, um, the number one tip that took me 10 years to discover or the number one email marketing tip that took me 10 years to discover. The problem with that, it's too long, right? Remember, a lot of people are viewing their emails on this, this guy right here. Oh, hey. Oh, sorry. Um, so they need to be short. I would say 40 to 50 characters max, but something like that, the number one tip that took me 10 years to learn. You could just say the number one tip for email marketing, right? but that took me 10 years to learn. Wow, I can actually get this tip in one moment versus the 10 years it took you to figure it out. You see how that like little add-on there can add just so much flavor to that sort of situation. All right. 
how do you put FOMO in the subject line? Just uh, F O and then uh, M O. I'm just kidding. Hey, y'all. It's 9 a.m. already. We went through an hour. Thank you so much for being a part of the income stream today. If you want to check it out tomorrow, patflin.com slash the income stream. We're going to bring the wheel back. And then probably Thursday, Thursday or Friday, I'll do a little bit more formal structured video like we did yesterday. That took a lot out of me and it took a little bit more planning, but I wanted to focus today on the workshop today. If you haven't gone there yet, patflin.com slash training, you sign up, you'll get access to the webinar. If it's full, keep trying. Just wanted to let you know it's going to be full. But every morning, 9 a.m., is when we finish 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, patflin.com slash the income stream. I appreciate you so much. And don't forget your toolkit page, uh, patflin.com slash toolkit to get a lot of free goodies, including some of my books and courses right now that are there for you for free. Hey, we had a lot of fun today. I appreciate you. This was uh, this was great. Thank you, Wheel. Thank you, Joe, PE with Joe for the inspiration. That was a lot of fun. And wow, we got to 200 likes with literally without asking. Which usually we have to beg for that. So, hey, you guys enjoy this. Thank you so much. Peace out. Take care. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm here to help you on your way to success. Team Flynn for the win. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. Yes, Mama Sue says I've been uh, drinking my caffeine today, and that is absolutely true. Peace out, y'all. Bruh.